So students, uh, we are going to move to our next section of this chapter, which is the losses in typing. We have already covered uh, Reynolds number, okay, and then we have covered uh, how to calculate Reynolds number, what is laminar, what is transitional, what is turbulent flow, and then we have covered what is the entrance region and how to calculate the entrance region, etc. So now that we know about these concepts, we are going to move to losses in piping. Uh, let's see what uh, is piping. Piping is basically a collection of network of pipes because of which we can basically transport fluid or transmit fluid or basically help circulate the uh, fluid in the system. So for instance, I've got a lake, okay, and this is uh, your home, okay. So what you want to do is you want to transport this fluid from one location to another location. So for this, you will need a pump, okay. So you need a pump and then a network of piping systems so that you can efficiently transmit uh, and transport fluid. So what happens is that due to the frictional effects of the pipe, okay, what happens is that due to the no slip condition, due to the frictional effects and then consequently the viscosity of the fluid, there, are, there is pressure loss. And when I want to transmit uh, fluid from one location to another location, then there is a loss of pressure. So we are interested in how much there is a loss of pressure so that we need to apply or we need to equate it with equivalent amount of work. So how are you going to know that there is pressure loss? So you, what you can do is you can drill a hole here, okay, and then you can drill a hole here, and then you can install a manometer. So once you install a manometer here and you install a manometer here, what you will observe is that the height of this manometer is higher than the height of this manometer. So there is a loss of pressure delta P. So here is P1 is greater than P2. So once we have the loss of pressure, there is a loss of energy. Loss of energy means that my pump, which is here, needs to work more. And it has to be supplied with more electrical energy to transport certain amount of fluid from one place to another. So how to calculate frictional effects in piping network and how to calculate the pressure loss. So in order to calculate pressure loss, the losses in piping are being divided into two major losses. Number one is two losses. One is the major loss and one is the minor loss. Major loss is basically characterized by long piping network, uh, singular pipes, okay? And major loss basically depends on the pipe itself. So I wrote this pipe, okay? And it depends on the surface roughness of the pipe and how much friction it generates. So based on the material of pipe, okay? Uh, the friction depends on the material and the roughness of the surface of the pipe. And the more is the friction, the more is the pressure loss. So it is very important for me to select an appropriate material for designed pipe so that the fluid can move freely with less amount of pressure loss. So this was all about major loss. Another type of loss is minor loss, okay? Minor loss occurs due to the fact that I cannot just simply supply a straight line. I need to have elbows, okay? I need to have bends, okay? I need to have some connectors, I need to have some valves, okay? And uh, to supply water, there are many fittings. So due to these fittings also there is pressure loss, there is frictional effect in the fitting as well as momentum loss also which occurs in the fittings. So piping network is then basically a collection of major loss and minor loss and piping loss, total loss of in piping system is denoted by HL. This is a function of major plus minor losses. So as I said earlier that the losses in piping depends on the type of material of which the pipe is made of. And when we talk about old piping system such as cast iron GI, you can see in the figure that there is a lot of corrosion. And due to that corrosion, the roughness of or internal roughness of the pipe is increased, due to which friction is increased, and due to friction increase, there is pressure loss. So now there are new types of uh, uh, piping systems which are basically being introduced, uh, made of polymers, high density polyethylene polymers, HDPE polymers, anti corrosion pipes also are being used. So the material is something which is very important so that it reduces the amount of power uh, which uh, is required to transport the fluid. Now that you are more familiar with pipe networks and pressure losses, let's look at some real-world applications of these concepts. Heat exchangers typically consist of two separate piping networks that bring a hot and cold fluid in close thermal contact without allowing them to mix. Pressure drop analyses must be performed when designing heat exchangers to ensure that the pumps can provide sufficient fluid flow rates and achieve the desired rate of heat transfer. Plaque buildup in arteries reduces the effective diameter for blood to flow. As a result, the heart has to work harder to compensate for the additional pressure loss. In extreme cases, the buildup increases the risk of a total blockage of the artery or heart failure. During an angioplasty procedure, a stent is inserted to re-expand the artery and restore normal blood flow. So students, let us see how uh, to calculate and what are the formulas for calculating pressure loss and head loss in a piping system. So before we start, let's say that we have got a pipe. Okay. And this is point 0.1 on the pipe, this is point 0.2 in the pipe. The pipe has a length L, L and it has a diameter D. Okay, 
so the pressure difference from point 1 to point 2 let's say it is delta P and the pressure loss and let's say I've got a fluid having an average velocity V which is moving in a in this pipe so we know that for uh, lambda flow the velocity profile looks like a parabola where we have a maximum velocity V max at the center and at this point it is velocity is 0 due to no slip condition so uh, based on uh, experimental derivations it has been derived that velocity v average is equals to minus r square over 8 times the dynamic viscosity dp over dx why there is minus sign because the pressure must decrease in the flow direction because of the viscous effects and it takes pressure to push the fluid through the pipe the velocity profile in this example is fully developed in our flow and it has a parabolic uh, velocity uh, profile so this is uh, the equation for uh, calculating the average velocity now what our objective is our objective is to calculate the pressure loss so pressure loss uh, dp over dx okay so this is the x direction so dp over dx is equals to p 2 minus p 1 whole divided by the length of the pipe but uh, because uh, p1 minus p2 minus p1 will give us a negative result right so i'm going to interchange it with p1 minus p2 to put a negative value and here it will be negative if i put it here uh, p1 minus p2 because p2 was smaller so i will put here a negative sign multiply by this equation by minus so now i can equate this equation number and dp of dx with this average velocity equation so the minus will cancel out so when we equate then the pressure delta p okay delta p is equal to p1 minus p2 okay delta p is equal to p1 minus p2 larger pressure minus smaller pressure this is equals to 8 times dynamic viscosity multiplied by length multiplied by the average velocity avg whole divided by the radius r square okay so if i want to put this formula in terms of uh, diameter that it would be 32 viscosity mu into l into v average whole divided by d square so this is the formula for uh, change in pressure or pressure loss now uh, the reason is that uh, for this uh, pressure loss is that uh, if I want to know what is uh, delta P delta P is the fluid flow is used to describe or designate pressure drop and this is P1 minus P2 a pressure drop due to viscous effects represents an irreversible pressure loss so the pressure loss is irreversible and this is also sometimes called delta PL okay so it is called delta PL to emphasize that this is loss just like a head loss and since you can see that the pressure loss is directly proportional to the viscosity this and this is directly proportional but delta pl is directly proportional to uh, viscosity so if the viscosity is zero there will be no pressure loss this is something which we can see so based on uh, uh, experiments they found out and they came up with another formula for pressure loss and this is delta pl is equals to friction factor f okay into l over d multiplied by rho v average square whole divided by 2 so this is the real formula for calculating a pressure loss okay and for head loss okay hl head loss is in terms of height okay hl then it becomes major is equals to delta p l over rho g so to calculate the height i want to uh, divide the pressure by density and gravity to get head or z and this becomes equals to f l over t into v average square whole divided by 2 g so in the next slide you can see the formulas clearly and this friction factor f is called Darcy friction factor for fully developed lamnar flow so remember that in, in the analysis of piping systems the losses are commonly expressed in terms of equivalent fluid column height so this height hl is an equivalent fluid column height it is called hl this is how much amount of height in terms of height the loss has occurred
and the head loss HL represents the additional height that the fluid needs to be raised by a pump in order to overcome the frictional losses in the pipe. The head losses is caused by viscosity and it is directly related to the wall shear stresses and it is valid both for laminar and turbulent flows in both circular and non-circular pipes. Once the pressure loss or head loss is known, then the required pumping power also can be determined. So we have two equations. One is uh, delta P is equals to 32 neo L V over D square. And then we have got another equation delta P is equals to friction factor Darcy friction factor into L over D multiplied by rho V square over 2. So let's equate this equation 1 and 2, equating them. So when we equate them, we have 32 mu LV all divided by D square is equals to F L over T rho V square over 2. So friction factor F is equals to 64 mu over rho D V average. Okay. And if you analyze this, then Reynolds number is rho Vd over mu, right? So friction factor then come out to be F is equals to 64 whole divided by R E. This is valid for laminar flow. Okay. So this equation shows that in laminar circular pipes, circular circular pipes the friction factor f is basically a function of the Reynolds number only and is independent on the, of the roughness of the pipe surface assuming of course that the roughness is not extreme now do remember that the derivation for this equation for friction factor was valid for laminar flow and if we want to calculate the friction factor for turbulent flow then it is a bit complex and it has been obtained through experimental iterations and experiments so when we talk about uh, turbulent flows, okay, the calculation of friction factor F is very complex, okay, and a, some scientists had to perform some painstaking experiments to obtain some equations for friction factor. And notice here that in the formula for friction factor, we have got two things: one is relative roughness, and one is the Reynolds number. Okay, so the friction factor in a fully turbulent flow depends on Reynolds number and relative roughness what is relative roughness relative roughness is equals to uh, kind of an epsilon over uh, diameter of the pipe and this is basically the ratio of mean height roughness of a pipe so it's mean height roughness of a pipe okay to the diameter or the pipe diameter and the functional form of this dependence cannot be obtained from theoretical analysis and all the available results are obtained from very difficult experiments so in 1939 uh, uh, Colebrook, Cyril F. Colebrook he combined the available data for transition and turbulent flow in a smooth as well as rough pipe into the following implicit relation okay this is known as Colebrook equation okay but here you can see that the friction factor is basically coming on both sides so that is why it has to be modified and reduced to a simpler equation so what happened was that later on an american engineer uh, Holland, he basically modified this colebrook equation and uh, the modified colebrook equation uh, is basically simplified with the friction factor basically a function of uh, Reynolds number and relative roughness but do notice that this logarithm uh, is basically a base 10 rather than a natural lab logarithm okay so this gives a 2% error and we are going to use this formula and this uh, friction factor colebrook equation to calculate the friction factor for turbulent flows so in order to calculate the friction factor uh, not only we have got modified colebrook equation but we have got another chart this is called the moody chart and moody basically he reviewed the rose diagram into a form commonly used today the famous moody chart is basically given in the figure you can see this is a moody chart and it presents the darcy friction factor for a pipe flow 
as a function of Reynolds number. So we have a Reynolds number on one side, and then we have got a relative roughness epsilon over d on one side. Okay, and then you can calculate friction factor, uh, transfer friction factor. Okay, so it is probably one of the most widely and accepted use charts in engineering. And although it is developed for circular pipes, it can also be used for non-circular pipes by replacing the diameter with hydraulic diameter. So for instance, let's say that I give you a value, a relative roughness of a five e over d is equals to zero point zero. Uh, 001 okay and i give you you can calculate the normal number let's say it's uh, 10 to the power 6 so what you going to do is you are going to select this line so you got these lines okay so you going to select this friction factor sorry relative roughness uh, line okay 0.001 and then you going to see where is the renal number so 10 to exponent 6 is here and then you going to intersect them so once i am going to intersect them i get this point okay and uh, this point intersects on the y axis on the y axis here so it comes out to be around about let's say this is 0.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so this is between 0.01 and 0.02 so i can say that this is 0.01 and round about 4 something so my friction factor comes out to be 0.014 so using this way also using the moody charts as well you can calculate a uh, friction factor for a uh, turbulent flows also you can use modified coulomb equation which we have discussed previously in the previous slide Networks are commonly found in engineered and natural systems since they can efficiently transport, circulate and distribute fluids. The water that comes out of the tap at your home travels through a complex city water supply system which is an excellent example of an engineered piping network. As fluid circulates through a piping network, it encounters frictional resistance from the channel walls and fittings and the fluid stream loses pressure as it overcomes these flow resistances. Characterizing and understanding these pressure losses is necessary to specify the correct components and sizes in a new design or to diagnose problems in an existing system. In this video, we will illustrate a simple approach for measuring the pressure drop within a pipe network and discuss some standard models for predicting losses in a few common geometries. Afterwards, these methods will be employed to experimentally measure pressure losses for comparison with the models. Finally, we'll discuss a few other applications of piping networks and pressure losses. Any time a fluid flows through a closed channel, it encounters some frictional resistance from the channel walls. As a consequence, a fraction of the fluid's mechanical energy is converted to heat, resulting in a continuous loss of pressure in the direction of flow. This pressure loss can be characterized in a given system by measuring the fluid pressure at discrete points along the channel, which is often done using simple liquid-level devices called manometers. A manometer is an open vertical or inclined section of tube connected to the piping channel so that it partially fills with liquid. The height of the liquid column is directly proportional to the fluid pressure at that point along the channel. Therefore, the difference in pressure between two points or delta p can be determined from the change in liquid height or delta h between two manometers. Unfortunately, it is not always practical to make direct measurements, and pressure losses must often be predicted before a system is built to ensure adequate fluid flow rates. In these situations, the Darcy friction factor formula can be used to predict frictional pressure loss. In this equation, delta p is the pressure loss over a length l for a channel with a circular cross section and an internal diameter d. Rho is the fluid density and u is the average flow velocity, defined as the volume flow rate divided by the cross sectional area of the channel. F is the Darcy friction factor, which follows different empirically and theoretically derived trends based on the Reynolds number and channel geometry. Refer to the text for the models used for straight circular channels and helical coils. The various channel sections in a pipe network are connected by discrete fittings such as valves, expanders and bends that also contribute to pressure loss. The pressure losses through these fittings are known as minor losses and are sometimes reported in terms of the equivalent length of a straight channel required to yield the same pressure drop. These losses are still modeled with the Darcy friction factor formula using the friction factor and flow velocity of the connecting channels and the tabulated value of equivalent length scaled by the inner diameter for the fitting. Total losses in the piping system are simply the summation of all the losses from.